If you recently lost your job and your health coverage due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and you think you may be eligible for Medicare, you probably have more questions than answers right now. Statewide Insurers Group, All Things Medicare, can help you with that. We can provide the guidance and the answers that you need to get the benefits you may be eligible for. Don't let this time of uncertainty jeopardize your eligibility for your Medicare benefits. Remember, relationships matter. Call Statewide Insurers Group today for the answers that you need now. 316-8166. Being prepared and trained is the best way to keep your family safe. The best way to be prepared is to learn from those who've spent a lifetime protecting us. Barnes Safety and Consulting LLC offers concealed carry classes with instructors who are law enforcement officers active and retired with more than 100 years of law enforcement experience. Monthly classes are taught year round with private classes and special group rates available. Classes are $75 and held in the Bailey area. Call or text 1-800-653-0643. Get your concealed carry permit and avoid becoming a victim. Welcome to the K-Files with Sandra and Lyndall this morning. Uh, I want to thank our sponsors who do this every week to make this possible. We have Statewide Insurance Group and we also have J.P. Barnes, Barnes Safety and Consulting. Folks, call J.P. Barnes. The number is in the commercial. you see it. Call him and get your um, concealed carry. It's important. It's important. So. Anyway, so. And, and like you always say, if you're going to take that class, um, there's two types of people that can teach that class. There's uh, folks can go through the National Rifle Association mm -hmm. and get uh, certified to teach that class, right. or law enforcement can get certified. To yeah, teach who that better class. than law enforcement to right. teach that? If you're, if you're going to so. take it, take it from a police officer. Absolutely. Um, so you last night um, went to the Tammy. Grady candlelight vigil. I did. We will. Um, we're we're going to show that next yes. week. Yes. Um, yes. And, and we're going to talk about that case. Next and it week. was a nice event. It, it was. It was. It was sad, but it was also. Um, it was good to see yeah. people support. You know. So I, they I, did I, have pretty I, good attendance. Absolutely. And and the important thing is 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 like I told Christy, her sister, that you have to keep you have to keep doing this kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Uh, right. But you you have to keep. Uh, missing persons cases in front of mm -hmm. the authorities and in front of the news and Absolutely. that's the only way that these things get solved. That's good. Um, what are we talking about today? All right well the hazards of live TV and having law enforcement right. and having law enforcement as guests. Um, Sergeant Tinder was scheduled to be here. Uh, he may still show up but he just called me a minute ago, and they've they found a body in Edgecombe County, so he has to he has well, to respond to that. Well, we understand that. that. I mean, yeah, things so, do happen. It, it, yeah, it, they seem to always happen on Thursday morning. Yes, they do. But don't but they? he has to um, take care of that. He said if he can, he'll cut away and he'll come here. However, the good news is the the things that I was going to talk about with him 
I pretty much have all the information just lacking right, of so Sergeant still, Tender himself. So we will still cover. You can still cover. We will that. cover the, okay. the Melanie Wiggins case today that he was going to talk about. Yes. And we've got two sex offenders that he wants to know where they're at. And we've got all that information, so we'll well, we'll cover all that later in the show. We're gonna we're gonna give him a chance to show up, yes, if sure. he can. But then, if sure. not, by the after the first commercial break, we'll have to get into it. Okay. Can so, we go back at some point, and I know you know just revisit some of these cases. Um, and and as I said, as promised, you know we got to have the do the sex offender thing. But can we go back over the you know Jeff Cobb and and yeah. the House of Cards guy, and absolutely. some of these cases that were so interesting that well, I mean, we did in detail. Yeah, absolutely, because um, you know, uh, a lot of those cases are, are being run on the um, our our sister show. Um, yes. In, you know, throughout the week, but yes, I mean, it's it's important to to always keep keep these them in cases. the forefront of people's minds. Right. My my first my first newspaper publisher, Lockwood Phillips, down at the. Um, down at the beach, he he he's more into radio. He loved radio shows. I, I think he still has more radio channels than he does. He didn't like to wear socks. Right. So he'd rather just. <laughs> yeah. So, but I mean, he used to. One of the things that he taught me over the years, I've learned a little bit from everybody. And he used to always do his hands like this, and he used to always say, "Polite, persistent pressure." That's how you get things done. Mm -hmm. And that's what I told um, Christy yesterday at the at the vigil for her sister and I tell that to anybody that'll listen and I practice that myself mm -hmm. and that is you be polite because you don't want to give anybody any excuse not to play along mm -hmm. you be persistent right you, you mm -hmm. get but then you also got to apply a little bit of pressure to folks and and sure. usually you can get things done that way that's right um, something that you know I, I we talked about the um, in passing or either in connection or just last week all out, we talked about the Pittman case, mm -hmm. the Seven Bridges Road killer yes. case. Well, I posted, I summed up, week. right, I summed up all his villains last week and I posted that on the K-Files Facebook page after the show. Yes. And, um, I mean, it got a lot of attention, uh, more really? so than anything else. Yeah, the, the right people shared it to the right people and then it just, wow. it blew up, okay, so, um, one of the things that, that happened, though, was a lot of people like that really aren't familiar with what we do or who I am right. were like, you know, uh, who are you? Uh, we'll, we'll go with the, more, with the more pleasant questions. You know, who are yes. you? You know, who do you think you are? Why are you doing this? Right. And um, it, it kind of dawned on me that um, we kind of started this show with the assumption that people knew who I was, because right. a lot of people do. Yeah, oh yeah, a lot but, of people know the name. But, and, and, and most of them hate me, but but we, we didn't really, I don't think we've ever really kind of talked about why why me. Yeah. It's the, you know, I mean, I, obviously I'm not, a, a, you know, like just another pretty face, right? So, I mean, why anybody could stand up here and say, Anybody can stand up here and read a script, right? You know, so why why is it you know why do people have to look at me every week? Right, is kind of what we're. So um, I was going to do this in the last segment, right? But since Sergeant Tender is uh, tending to bodies on the right. side of the road, we're we're you know I figured we'll go ahead and get this out of the way, and um, this is this is just a way to to catalog why me. Then that way, for for future reference, if anybody asks, I can just say, "Hey, go, go watch this episode," and right. then you, you know, so you'll know. Okay, so we're gonna talk about me for a minute. Okay. All right. All right. Is that good? Yeah, that's All good. Right. If you have any questions about anything, jump in. Oh yeah, I will. Don't. Because I because I wrote this in, in 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 the car about two minutes ago. Oh so gosh. Okay. If I let well when when <laughs> well when when Tinder got busy, I knew I had to come up with something, right? Like the show must go That's on. That's right. All right. So just general background. I'm I'm married. I have five kids. Uh, three of them are adults. One lives in Wilson, works at Walmart. One lives in Chicago, is a graphic designer, and my daughter is now stationed in, in California. She was stationed in Japan, but she has. Um, since moved back to the states in the last few months. Oh wow! My two my two youngest kids 
are in the high school and my one of my sons is about to go into the Air Force they're gonna fly out to Chicago I mean they're gonna fly out to California over the summer and spend wow. all summer out there I wish interesting that, yeah I wish I could okay so I'm a high school dropout right I, I did that I then I went back to community college and earned my adult high school diploma okay I did that so I could join the Navy okay I served um, all over the world as a boiler mechanic and a firefighter for okay. three and a half years. Wow! They, uh, I had met a, I had met a girl that that I really liked back home, and Bill Clinton said that if you had less than six months left to go, you could get out. So it's the when he said that I was backing out of the, I was already backing out of line, <laughs> heading to the <laughs> to get out. So um, I got out of the Navy in '95. You stayed in there how long? I was three and a half years. Three and a half years, okay. Yeah, I, it was a four year, it would have been four years. Four but, years, but you but, got out early. Right. Okay. All right, so um, I married uh, my wife. I've been married 26 years. Wow. Right. You've done really good. Yes, I know. married 26 I years, know. Linda. Well, I'm she's, telling she's you. puts up with a lot. She does. But I mean, I, you know, like I, she was way out of my league. <laughs> it's a long story, but she was way out of my league, and how do you, you know, you don't mess that up, right? Yeah, that's okay. right. All right, so. I've been a, a licensed private security officer since I got out of the Navy for two decades. Okay. Right now, um, uh, that's because newspapers don't pay a lot, so right. I have to, you know. Um, but what that means uh, on the weekends, right? I I, I have uh, worked casinos, hotels, manufacturing companies, uh, the projects um, as an armed guard. That was fun. Uh, you, you you name it. I've I've, I've worked in that environment uh, as a armed and unarmed private security. And you officer. still do. And I still do. I don't do the armed anymore because I'm old. But right. but um, I still I still do. I work every weekend uh, right. at a at a financial headquarters institution in Wilson. Right. I, I I can't really say which one, but think about yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what that means though is that um, I've got a good background. Right. I've got no felonies because right. you can't do that if you got a felony. That's right. I got no felonies. I've learned over the years to pay attention to detail, and I've learned how to read people. Right? Because okay. I mean, I, you know, you got to assess so, people. Along the way, I won't interrupt you. Sure, along please do. Along the way, I mean, how long ha through all of this? Mm -hmm. How long have you been interested in missing people and things like that? Um. When did your interest there's, there's, start? There's, there's, there's two answers to that. There's three answers to that, right? One, I've always been interested in it because my mother was interested in it. Okay. And I remember as a as I was a military brat, and we, we grew I grew up in Sanford. I don't know if y'all folks you know where Sanford's at. Yeah. Okay, we used to, for doctor's appointments and everything, we went to Fort Bragg or Pope Air Force right. Base because, you know, the military uh, mm -hmm. took care of all that. Yeah. And I remember my mother used to, we would ride she would take detours on the way back from the military base because she was familiar with sites in Harnett County and places like that where there were unsolved murders and mysteries. Mm -hmm. And and she would she she was a great storyteller. And we, we would drive around and she would tell us all these stories about this woman found a body in the outhouse and this I mean oh, she knew all really? she knew all yeah, she knew all this stuff. And she read the, the newspaper all the time, and she always had uh, really keen observations and opinions about the murders that were going on, mm -hmm. you know, and everything. So, so that was one little okay. part of it. The second part of it came along when, um, and, I, and I'm going to get into a lot more detail about this when we launched the Unidentified Project here very shortly, but, yes. but my niece was kidnapped and murdered in 2006. Wow. And it, I, I didn't have an um, uh, extremely close relationship with her, but we, there were some times over the years that we sp spent time together. And mm -hmm. so it was, it was really hard. It was hard for my sister. It was hard for my family. And um, that kind of stayed with me because mm -hmm. I was just getting into the writing. I was just getting into the newspapers. I, well, I had been in newspapers for a few years, but I was covering like... Um, I think the biggest story at that point was that there's not enough parking spaces at the beach. I think yeah, was the biggest I mean, story really. I had done. So, and then the final step was um, my editor. I was working at the Daily News at the time, and my editor came and said, "Hey, um, 
we haven't done an unsolved murder story in a while, I mean, a, you know, unsolved cases story in a while, do that. So I looked at what other people had done, and usually, I mean, newspapers and TV stations do that routinely, right? But I looked at what had always gone before, and what had always happened before was that um, reporters would simply go find the old story and rewrite the first sentence or two and then mm -hmm. run it just like that. Right. And I thought, you know, how are you going to really get anything done if you're just telling the story that was three years old right? or whatever. So I decided two things. One, I was going to bust up. In Jacksonville at that time, I think there were like 30 unsolved murders. I decided I was going to tell each one of them individually rather than just right. do a long list of them. And I was going to go find new information. Right. So um, that was about 2007 probably mm -hmm. with my niece's death still weighing on my mind. Right, right. So we... Um, we had we had some pretty good success with that. It was something new, uh, you know. That was I mean, crime shows hadn't. I mean, they were. There's always been crime shows, but I mean, like Investigation Discovery was just starting, mm -hmm. you know. So it was kind of new to people to see right. uh, uh, photos and an entire story on one case from 1970 right. you know, or whatever. So people kind of paid attention to it. We had some pretty good success with it, and then here I am. So interesting. So. Um, I spent some time, well, back to the script, but please interrupt me. Uh, I, I spent some time at uh, Baptist Bible College in Springfield, Missouri, to, and, and I studied at Moody Bible Institute in Chicago to be a preacher. That didn't really work out, so uh, there was the end of that. But it did, it did get me some college credits, and it did right, start sure. me on that path, knowing that that's what I needed to do eventually, right? right. So I worked at a sawmill, I worked at a tractor factory, all these things, and then in 2001, I figured out, you know, I need, um, if I'm ever going to get anywhere, I need an education. Mm -hmm. And that's, I tell people that education is the answer to just about every problem. In every world problem that we have, right. education is the answer. So um, I went back to college and I got my associate's degree, and I began writing for newspapers around 2003. I've worked at three dailies, several weeklies, all in eastern North Carolina. Right. Okay. Um, I've written. I started writing about unsolved crimes in 2007. You already asked me that, so you know. We'll, I've written freelance about this um, for newspapers all over North Carolina, all the right. way out. Well, I mean, just the entire state. I've written for so many different newspapers about it in North Carolina. Um, I used to write for a national website about unsolved crimes all over the country. Um, so I've been writing about them for. A, a long time now, right? right? Um, so I worked freelance for the New York Daily News. I I've, I've did freelance photography for People Magazine during their investigation stories, right? Um, that, uh, the success that we talked about earlier, I, I, I've been on CNN, Fox News, Nancy Grace, Investigation Discovery already. Unbelievable. Uh, Dateline. Uh, I, I said already because she opened the magic door, which means it's time to go and I'm only halfway through, so I'll make it quick. Um, I've taken classes at LSU and Wilmington. I went back to college a couple years ago, got my, finished my bachelor's degree. In May 1st, I'll have my master's degree from East Carolina University. Good for you. Right. Um, so let me, let me scroll down here. I don't even, I, I, I've got 24 uh, North Carolina Press Association awards. Five of them in investigative journalism. Mm -hmm. I can't. I, I wanted to get into why, but but all of that is to say I'm not. I'm not trying to to um, you know. Well, I think the kids call it a, a low brag or a, a, a humble brag. I don't know whatever they call it. Um, I just want. I want the people that question. You know, who am I to comment on these things, or who am I to provide my opinion about? what's going on. Right. I didn't just like roll off the turnip truck yesterday no, you and decided didn't. to start talking about this That is a pretty lengthy so, <laughs> yeah, so, resume. So uh, really quickly, my five investigative reporting awards over the years were uh, I helped solve a two uh, in 2000 and in 2008 I helped solve a 1972 murder, right? In 2010, I helped break up a corrupt police unit that was uh, wow. arresting people for drugs that weren't even doing drugs. 
um, and they had to change the entire policy. A lot of people lost their jobs over that. Um, I um, let me see. I, I've written. I, I won an investigative award in 2016 for writing about the Pizza Hut murder in Tarboro and getting that case reopened. Wow. Um, uh, 2019, I won an investigative award for writing about uh, Landis Falcone, who uh, lived in Virginia but yeah. somehow worked for uh, Rocky Mountain. Remember that. And then last year, um, I won an investigative award for my series on the Travis Lynch case. So I wow. mean, I, you know, I've, I've, I've pretty much done what there is to do to to get me here. So when I say something, it comes with 20 years of. So you didn't get an award for Chief James Moore's story you did? Yeah, oh yeah, I forgot about that one. Um, uh, that was almost like we, you planned that. I, I, I won the O'Henry Award for writing for, from the Associated Press for uh, explaining how the police chief lied about crime numbers right. here in Rocky Mountain. Right, and, that and was it, a good story. And, and, assisted, <coughs> and, and assisted Chief Moore in retiring early. That's exactly so, right. Um, so. Yeah, so I mean, I, you know, I've done um, You've I've done been some there, stuff. done that. Right. That's Folks, cool. when we get back, um, Sergeant Tinder with the Edgecombe County Sheriff's Office will either be here or he will be on the side of the road over in Tarboro yes. investigating a, a unidentified or a, investigating a body. So if he's not here, we're going to we're going to press on with the Melanie Wiggins case. Okay. Be right back. If you recently lost your job and your health coverage due to the COVID-19 pandemic and you think you may be eligible for Medicare, you probably have more questions than answers right now. Statewide Insurers Group, All Things Medicare, can help you with that. We can provide the guidance and the answers that you need to get the benefits you may be eligible for. Don't let this time of uncertainty jeopardize your eligibility for your Medicare benefits. Remember, Relationships matter. Call Statewide Insurers Group today for the answers that you need now. 316-8166. Being prepared and trained is the best way to keep your family safe. The best way to be prepared is to learn from those who've spent a lifetime protecting us. Barn Safety and Consulting LLC offers concealed carry classes with instructors who are law enforcement officers active and retired with more than 100 years of law enforcement experience. Monthly classes are taught year round with private classes and special group rates available. Classes are $75 and held in the Bailey area. Call or text 1-800-653-0643. Get your concealed carry permit and avoid becoming a victim. Don't forget to get your um, concealed carry. Concealed carry. And um, 406-6736, don't forget to call that number if you know anything about any case that we talk about on this show because that's what it's all about. We're not up here to hear ourselves talk. We want to solve crimes. Right. Uh, there's only one bald person here right now, which shoot. means that Sergeant Tinder is stuck on the side of the road investigating a body that they found this morning. So condolences to whoever's family that is right. and we hope that they figured that out uh, but we got to press on uh, sergeant tender was going to be here today to talk about melanie wiggins i'll tell you who melanie wiggins is uh, she was found dead in 2005 she was um uh, publicly identified as being a victim of antoine pittman which, right. which we know that now that she's not, or How do you she know? never was. Well, that's what Sergeant Tender was going to be here to talk about. There's so many different reasons, and I'll, I'll get into them, but she, the main reason that she was included, and when I say publicly, I mean um, Sheriff Knight had to acknowledge that they at least investigated her as a possibility of being involved. Right. Right. But I mean, because you have it to, was during the time. Right. So you the have to. Exactly. Was, but then the news media grabbed that and yeah. and ran with it sure. and to say you know you know so then once she was included in that list, it was very hard to ex extricate her mm -hmm. from that list you know sure. and like I think I said um, last week or some point you know if you go on Wikipedia and look up Seven Bridges Road hers is the first name 
on the list right when she when she was not a victim of Antoine Pittman's and then the consequence of that is is that if he didn't kill her somebody else did and they're running around out there right, right. so we're right. going to talk about the Melanie Wiggins case I'm going to get Tinder back on here when he's not investigating right bodies. but but Linda that is a key thing that you just said that's why it's so important to acknowledge and and learn that this is not one of those cases exactly because there is a killer on the loose that's right and that is the purpose of most of what I do and that's the purpose of this show is to um, uh, let the public know about yes. what's going on you know I had a lot of reaction from folks last week about the fact that Liz Smallwood was found off Melton Drive mm -hmm. in Nash County a lot of people didn't realize uh, the location of that, mm -hmm. you know, they didn't realize that. So, so that's what we're trying to do is provide right. information to people. They may have known it. It may have been available years ago, right. but not so much now. So we're trying to, to either bring it back to light mm -hmm. or let people know. What is your face? Tell everybody what your Facebook is. Uh, uh, I don't know. Um, go I go, go on to Facebook. Facebook. I don't know. I just type Facebook and it goes to it. No, folks, go on to Facebook and search um, the K files. And it'll come up. Okay. Um, like it used to, you know. I, like I, I, I say this all the time, but it's true. When I first started, you Google, you, you search the K files on Facebook, and you get some little old lady that was making cupcakes. Yeah, it but doesn't have, end here on this show. No, no. I, it's I beyond that, you've got I a post, Facebook page. Is my point? Yes. That, that talks I, about I, I post on Facebook um, three or four times a week I, right. I, uh, about stuff on the show and just about cases over the years that. Um, that I've written about. If you're interested at all in true crime or crime in, in the Rocky Mountain, mm -hmm. greater area, whatever, um, go on there. Uh, go to Facebook, search K Files. You'll see my uh, sad, ugly face, and then you'll know you're in the right place. So um, I, I want to warn viewers we're, we're going to show a couple autopsy drawings. Okay. Right? They're, not, they're not photos, they're just drawings, but you know, people that are connected to the case right. or New Melanie or whatever, they, they might find them disturbing so I want to you know tell people that all right so um, the main difference between Melanie Wiggins case and all nine of Antoine Pittman's right. cases is all of his victims were strangled right, right. so we want to show um, M Melanie was was stabbed several times in the chest the arms the back here's the defensive wounds if you look on the inside the bottom row of hands those are defensive wounds, and what that is is when someone's being stabbed, they'll throw their hands up to try to stop from being stabbed, and you can see the cuts all over her hands. Well, mm. I mean, that lets investigators know whether they were, you know, knocked out first or stabbed from behind mm -hmm. or, you know, or whatever. You know, there's a lot of defensive wounds on the hands. They've got the hands up, you know, don't stab me. They right. get stabbed anyway. They could be wrestling with the attacker. Right. Okay, so... Um, she didn't die from the stab wounds, though, right? She died from um, blunt force trauma to the head. Oh. You can see that football shape on her head mm. is the medical examiner's attempt to show that when she was hit with either a rock or a brick or something like that, that it caved her head in there at her, wow. at her right temple. Okay, so, so that's how oh, she awful. died. Right, uh, a terrible way to die. So. Um, we've got a blunt force trauma, we've got stabbings, right? So uh, very different MO, and that's what Sergeant Tender was going to talk about, very different MO than, than Pittman. And yeah. of course people do change their MOs, right? Right. But, but they, they tend to go to uh, uh, they, they're not going to go from a stabbing to a strangling. They right. might go from strangling to stabbing, but they're not going to go from, usually they're not going to go from stabbing to strangling, right? So, so the victimology is not right for this to be one okay. of Antoine Pittman's victims. So then that, you know, so someone else uh, killed her, so we got to figure out who did that. And okay, that's what so we're doing where, today. What, where did she we'll live? Get there. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll get there. I'm so, I, okay. you know, I, I get know. into these I things. Know. And I, I know, and, and lastly about her, her death, uh, her jaw had been broken and some oh. teeth had been knocked out. So, I mean, it was a pretty violent oh, attack. Oh, it was. Right. Okay. So, um, you know, law enforcement, they're conducting their investigation all these years all along, 
Right. The public is confused about who Melanie Wiggins is a victim of. Right. Law enforcement never was. Right. You know, but I had conversations with them, and it's like, you know, you've got to let the public know. We, we know we know that the Antoine Pittman cases have been set aside by the prosecutor's office. They, they figure that it's done because he's in prison for life. Right. Right. But what about the other cases that aren't his? They, you know, so um, so one thing I want to clear up uh, quickly is like uh, some confusion in the public. Okay, so some news accounts say that she was found in the uh, found in the woods um, off of um, Nobles Mill Pond Road. Mm -hmm. So if you look at that picture. There's Nobles. I was out there the other day. Quit looking at your phone. Look at this picture. No, I'm trying to. Somebody's look, trying to call them. Look at this guys. picture. Nobles That's, Mill Pond Road. Right. So she. she I know found, where that is. She's found off Noble Mills Pond Road. Right. That's out. According to the autopsy. Now. That's the out. Confusion, 43. The confusion. The confusion. It is out. Close. That, to that is out. 43. I know. Nowhere close to Seven Bridges no, Road. No. Absolutely not. So a lot. Uh, but a lot of news reports said that she was found off Old Farm Road. So then, to me, there was some cute confusion there. Was it Old Farm Road or was it Mills Pond Road? Right. But if you look at these pictures, those two roads intersect. That's the same picture we just showed, but from right. a different angle. Old Farm Road and Nobles Mill Pond Road intersect out there. Uh, Why would Pine there Tom, be Tom, any conversation about her being one of the missing women on Seven Bridges Road? I think that the media was looking for sensationalism at that time. Yeah. And although there were enough there were enough victims already they wanted right. more uh, you know yeah. and there was I mean honestly there, I mean you know uh, there was blood in the water and why not go ahead and make it as yeah. interesting as you can That's right. and then when the national media got involved you know uh, local media has to when, when when the show is when the when the when the circus is over the local media has to still be here they have to talk about Christmas parades and right. beauty pageants but when the national media blows through town they don't care about any of that right they're going to try to get the best story that, that you know oh, the yeah, most juicy course. story they can get and move on so I think that's what happened here so you asked me about where she lived at right um, news accounts say that she lived on South Grace Street right which is in wow. downtown, you know. But I talked to Sergeant Tender the other day, and he said that her actual last known address was Park Avenue. So there's all these, all these different uh, versions of, of. Well, Park uh, Avenue, isn't that right there at Grace Street? It is the same situation. It turns off. So of that's Grace. what I'm saying is that there's all these these confusion. Yeah. These these confused elements that really aren't that many contradictions if when you start right. to look at them. Okay, so um, here we go. This 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 story gets Melanie's story gets much worse. Okay, so in 2005, she's she's picked up, or I mean, whatever happens to her, right? She's she's murdered and dumped out on Mill Pond Road, Mill Mill right. Nobles Mills Pond Road. Right. Um, then the, the, the Pittman stuff starts happening. Right. You know, so there's all of that. Well, she had a, Melanie had a son named Joshua, right? And he would, um, as he was growing up, he would always ask his grandparents, um, have, um, has my mother's murder been solved? Right. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, that, I mean, that's kind of sad to have a, a, a we're talking about a, a, a boy, eight years old, nine years old, that's asking, pitiful. you know, has my mother's murder been solved? And then, hey, Brittany, you got a picture of Joshua? There there we go. go. So uh, she's always busy back there doing a thousand things, folks. So uh, he's asking his grandparents. You know, when when his mother died, he had to live with his grandparents. He's asking them all the time, "Where's mama? Uh, not where's mama, but has mom? The, has it been solved? Right. So I mean, it's it, to me, it's even doubly tragic that he understands that she's been killed, but he just wants to know if someone's been caught for the murder. Mm. Well. Ah, boy. In 2008, he was living with his parents in Elm City, which is in Wilson County, right mm -hmm. on the, the Nash-Wilson line down there on 301, right? Right. A tornado came through in 2008 and collapsed the house and killed that kid. Oh, you are kidding. No. So the family has oh. been through, the family has been through a lot, right? So not only yes, does Melanie have. get violently murdered and dumped like garbage 
But out you in the don't country. think she he, she was murdered on Noble Mill Pond, just dumped there? Right. I, I don't. I mean, I was. Else. That was a question I was going to ask Tinder, and and see what his you know see what the response was. But I think that was just a a a, a dump site. I don't okay. I don't think she I don't think she was killed there. So then you know so the family goes through enough, but then three years later. A tornado hits the house and kills Golly, her child. So what is what a you know the Wiggins family been through a lot, and 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 what I'm doing here today is not to not to add to that pain, but to say look you know whoever killed her is still, still out, out there. there. Absolutely. And, and somebody needs to call that number right there. Tell them what it is. My dyslexia will hinder me from giving the right number. Four zero six six seven three six. There is a reward, folks. There is a reward up to $15,000. Let the Edgecombe County Sheriff's Office know who killed Melanie Wiggins, and they yes. will arrest them. and it is anonymous. You do not call that number. You do not have to say who you are. Yeah, we will be back. Uh, we got two sex offenders that Sergeant Tender really wanted we us to talk want about. To talk about so we, we got some really bad customers that we're going to talk about here in a minute. If you recently lost your job and your health coverage due to the COVID-19 pandemic and you think you may be eligible for Medicare, you probably have more questions than answers right now. Statewide Insurers Group, All Things Medicare, can help you with that. We can provide the guidance and the answers that you need to get the benefits you may be eligible for. Don't let this time of uncertainty jeopardize your eligibility for your Medicare benefits. Remember. Relationships matter. Call Statewide Insurers Group today for the answers that you need now. 316-8166. Being prepared and trained is the best way to keep your family safe. The best way to be prepared is to learn from those who've spent a lifetime protecting us. Barn Safety and Consulting LLC offers concealed carry classes with instructors who are law enforcement officers active and retired with more than 100 years of law enforcement experience. Monthly classes are taught year round with private classes and special group rates available. Classes are $75 and held in the Bailey area. Call or text 1-800-653-0643. Get your concealed carry permit and avoid becoming a victim. And welcome back. And as we said, the number is 406-6736. If you know anything about any case we talk about, there is a up to $15,000 reward, folks. If you need money and you know something, it will be anonymous. You know, I know we say this a lot. We try to say this a lot so that somebody, because somebody knows something about every crime. That's right. People are out there that have information, just like the Tammy Grady case. I mean, I know folks know about that case. We'll be talking about that next we're gonna, week. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna spend the entire show next week. Next week on talking on Tammy about Grady. Tammy Grady, because mm -hmm. there are things in that, there are things happening in that case that folks just don't know. Yeah, about. we've learned some new and, information. And when you, so. when you hear, when people, hear, it's almost unbelievable mm -hmm. to be honest with you. And and I and I've been doing this a long time, and I find right. some of the some of the maneuvers in this case unbelievable. Yeah. So. Uh, I think it would be very interesting to people. Oh, yeah. I do, too. Um, Sergeant Tinder wanted me to talk about two sex offenders that they're looking for they can't find. And, you know, folks, again, we're talking about people that have had their day in court. They have been convicted by a jury of their peers or they pled guilty. And they have been required to register uh, with the state of North Carolina as a sex offender so that they can keep track of them. Well, it's scary not knowing where these people are and because you have children, your grandchildren are out in the yard playing. Right. And your, your children, whatever. Yeah, you know. and, and, and that's exactly what one of the things Tinder does two things. He investigates homicides and he uh, keeps track of all the sex offenders mm -hmm. in Edgecombe County. You know, wow. so I mean, imagine his dinner table conversations when he gets home. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it, 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 um, it's imperative that we know where these people are, mm -hmm. right? You know, I That's mean, it's. Right. Um, I just saw there's a new law coming out, uh, or, or there's they're 
there's a, a, a new bill that mm -hmm. just came out in the last couple of days about mug shots. And they're trying to make it harder for, you know, there's organizations that, that get mug shots because they're public record. Mm -hmm. And then they put them on the internet and then they pay people, yeah. they charge people to take the mug shots down. Right. So there's a new law to try to fix that and make it to where they have to take them down for free if they're asked to, right? Because, okay. I mean, this is not a news organization that's providing news. This is right. just a business purely making money off of mug shots. Right. Um, this situation is different, though, because these folks have been convicted, right? I mean, that's what, I mean, there's no, you always get bleeding hearts who say, oh, you know, these folks have been convicted in the court of law. They've had an appeal that's, that's lost, and now they're registered sex offenders. And by law, they are supposed to tell law enforcement where they live. Okay. And the reason for that is when a kid goes missing or something, you can go find out where they live. Yes. Um, or you can go to talk to them. But you got a lot of sex offenders who, who move and don't tell law enforcement where right. they're at. So now they don't know where these very dangerous individuals are. And Sergeant Tender wants us to... He wants you to call that number right there and let Edgecombe County Sheriff's Office know where these sex offenders are. I did a ride along with the Nash County Sheriff's Department one time. It was very enlightening. Is that, I mean, were you, a, 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 you sure you weren't a, in the back seat? Well, arrested? I was in the back seat. You, ain't those the most uncomfortable <laughs> back seats in the world? Would, yeah. But anyway, um, a ride along, a roundup of sex offenders that oh, had nice. moved and didn't live. Right. It was the most, it was very interesting. Yeah, well, I mean, they, they need to be, um, they need to be monitored and mm -hmm. they need to be locked up if they fail yeah. to live up to the court ordered situation. So the first one we got is Ozzy Dunstan. Okay. Um, there's Mr. Dunstan right there in 2016, right? Okay, right. so, um, he was convicted in um, Nash County in um, January 2003 of restraint against a minor. He was given probation for 36 months and he was required to register as a sex offender, mm -hmm. right? Well, he has, um, he has decided that he's not going to tell them where he lives at, so we don't know where he's at. And the, the dangerous thing about that, um, Brittany, show what Mr. Dunson looks like now. Oh, wow. Exactly. I mean, nothing like what, oh, wow, thank you, Brittany. Nothing like what he looks like there, right? Oh, I mean, wow. that picture right there, go back to the first picture, that's almost a disguise, really, right? I mean, yes. so that's what it's always important to talk about the, the T-bar, the eyes and the nose. Yes. The law enforcement, when they go looking for people, the eyes and the nose hardly change, right? So Mr. Dunson does not uh, look like what most people remember him looking like. So he's out there somewhere. They, you know, I'm not accusing this guy of anything untoward that he ain't already been convicted of. Right. Maybe he just forgot. When was this? Uh, when was he? Well, he's he felt the last time that they knew where he was was in November. So he's been in he's been in the wind since November, right? He's been okay. registered sex offender since 2003. Hmm. Um, remember that movie, The Dirty Dozen? Yeah. Lee Marvin, he comes in there and they got all the guys in the in the jail cells and he, he sees this one guy and he's like, You got a you got a record like a roll of toilet paper, mm. right? <laughs> well that that's Mr. Dunstan because not only is he a registered sex offender, right? He has been convicted of larceny, possession of stolen goods, forgery, assault on a female three separate times, mm. property damage, failure to heed to blue lights, resisting police, common law robbery, God. felonious restraint. I'm vehicle breaking and entering, carrying a concealed weapon, trespassing, and drugs. These are all convictions. This is these, a bad guy. Right. These are convictions. These aren't these aren't uh, charges. Oh wow. Right? These are convictions. So um, let let. And we don't know where he is. We don't know where he is. And Anybody we're to. knows? Call that number. All right. The next guy makes Mr. Dunstan look like a saint. Oh my God. Right. Here is Ronnie Pritchard. He's 57 years old, right? Uh, the last, wow. the, the 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 last place they knew he was was in December of 2019. He was homeless in Raleigh, but right now we don't know where he's at, and 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 you're supposed to, right? Right. So um, 
he was convicted in 2003. His uh, victims, his, he, he was 37 to 39 years old, which lets you know that it, it, that, that it happened multiple times. Right. His victim was 12 years old, right? Oh, come on. He was convicted of... Uh, put, Nothing got, makes me no matter than I, that. I don't know if, you, if folks can read all that, but I just wanted to see it. Indecent I liberties with children. Right. Four child. counts of indecent liberties with a minor. Two counts of first degree rape with a child under 13. Two counts of incest with a near relative. And three counts of first degree sex offense with a child under 13. Right? These are all oh. serious crimes. He served. And all he, of these with the same child. Right. Oh. Over, over a couple year period. He went into prison uh, in 2003 and he got out uh, in 2018. So he was he was in prison a long time, as he should have been. He served eighteen. He served eighteen years. Eighteen years in prison. He got out. The second he got out, show that that picture, Brittany, the last one. The second he got out, he, he absconded. So the second he was released from prison, he's gone. They don't know where he's at. Right. You know, he, he's in Raleigh. He's is, is he in Tarboro? Is he in in Rocky Mount? Is he in uh, mm. is he in your backyard? Right. We don't know exactly. where he is. Exactly. See, that's so, scary. So that's what when 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 I was asking. So that was a family member. That makes it right. even worse. Right. So uh, well, it's incest is the universal taboo, right? There's some things. There's a there's there's some things that some cultures accept and other cultures don't, right? There's, right. There's some things that. Um, uh, more than one wife, for instance. You know, some cultures yeah. you have two, three wives. I, mean, I don't know why a man would want more than one wife. I have trouble dealing with the one that I have. <laughs> but but incest is the universal taboo. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's bad. And 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 this guy needs to be. He he is a danger to society. That is awful. And that's why Sergeant Tinder asked me. You know, when 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 Muse, uh, Lieutenant Muse, is. Sergeant Tender supervisor. He's a member of the mm -hmm. the board, the team cold case board. When I asked Lieutenant Muse, you know, can can you provide me somebody mm -hmm. to talk to? He said Tender would be the man for the job, so, which he has been. Tender comes on the show. He does a couple of murders. He does a good He job. asked me, hey, look, I got some sex offenders. I don't know where they're at. Can you can can we do that? Of course we can do that. So this happened so, in Edgecombe County, and the guy probably lived in Edgecombe County at one time, right? And he, yes, and he's in the wind, and we don't know where he's at, mm -hmm. and and we need to know where he's at. I mean, that's, absolutely, that's the somebody thing. knows where he is. He's contacted somebody, so right, um, somebody knows, and there's the number four zero six six seven three six. Completely anonymous, folks. Please call if you know. Absolutely. All right. So now we're done. Now we can talk. Yes. We don't ever talk no well, we more had a busy, on the air. We had a busy show today. It went by pretty quick. Very busy show. Sometimes I did um, a show without you one time. I'll never do that yeah, again. Yeah, you. I will never, <laughs> ever do this show without you again because it was like uh, it went by so slow, and I, and I just it was it, me and um, Lieutenant Seifman did a wrap up on the Rocky Mount cases. Right. And I I thought that it was going to take a long time. <laughs> So I was, the whole time I was thinking, you know, how am I going to get through all this stuff? We, we blew through those cases in about five minutes. And I had, wow. and I had an hour, I had 55 well. minutes left to go, you know, minus commercials. So you're here because uh, you, you, you know TV and you know how to keep me straight on things. And you ask questions. I think you ask valuable questions that, that the public would ask. And, you, well, and what you. happens a lot wow. of times... When I work on these cases and stuff, if there's something that I know in my head, yes. I leave it out. Yeah. Right. And it's a it's a good question that anybody would ask. Right. But I don't know to ask it because I'm knee deep into the stuff. Right. So when you you're here to ask those questions, well, and you I do appreciate a very it. good job. And and yes, don't yes. forget, Lindell is working on another show that we play during the day. He goes out to the scene, and and tapes a stand up there talking about the crime at that particular place. Now, also, I want to get in real quick. We are having a telethon to raise money to put in the uh, pot um, to replenish as we pay out, um, you know, to replenish our $15,000. Right. So, um, 
Anyway, double Chevrolet's been so kind as to let us do it on their lot on a Saturday. Do we it's know the date festive, yet? fun, and I think they've just decided on May 1. May 1. Hey, May 1 is May Day. Yes. So May that, Day is the day I get my a, master's degree. Oh, so is it? Yeah, so we're going to celebrate oh, all the way around. Oh, that's a big celebration. Celebratory Ooh, day. Long time so, coming. Um, anyway, May 1, yes, and congratulations for that, and we'll... Uh, but I'm not going to congratulate him yet. I'm going to make sure he gets through well, I gotta May defend, 1. I gotta He's defend got another my, month. i got to defend my thesis next week, so let's wait until that happens. Oh, wow. Yeah, two wow. and a half hours of answering professor questions. Oh, gosh. So well, let's get through that first. But uh, please participate, folks. We need you to come down to the lot, buy a hot dog. We're going to sell hot dogs, something. You know, we're making it very festive. Um, what we're trying to do is, um, and we're going to have some fun auction items that you'll be able to bid on. Um, want to put out there that we do have some Carolina Panther tickets that you, Ooh. we're going to set up a lottery that you can bid to bring money into the kitty. Also going to have giveaways. I'm going to give away something. Several items. So. We're collecting things for that now. It's going to be a lot of fun, so we want y'all all to participate. And it's all for such a good cause to go into Team Cold Case, the umbrella nonprofit for this program right here, and so that we can solve some of these crimes that are unsolved that Lyndall talks about every single week. So there you go. Thank you, folks. I'm finished. I'm, I've been finished. Okay. Appreciate it. Make it a great day, everybody. If you recently lost your job and your health coverage due to the COVID-19 pandemic and you think you may be eligible for Medicare, you probably have more questions than answers right now. Statewide Insurers Group, All Things Medicare, can help you with that. We can provide the guidance and the answers that you need to get the benefits you may be eligible for. Don't let this time of uncertainty jeopardize your eligibility for your Medicare benefits. Remember. Relationships matter. Call Statewide Insurers Group today for the answers that you need now. 316-8166. Being prepared and trained is the best way to keep your family safe. The best way to be prepared is to learn from those who've spent a lifetime protecting us. Barnes Safety and Consulting LLC offers concealed carry classes with instructors who are law enforcement officers active and retired with more than 100 years of law enforcement experience. Monthly classes are taught year round with private classes and special group rates available. Classes are $75 and held in the Bailey area. Call or text 1-800-653-0643. Get your concealed carry permit and avoid becoming a victim.